right, let's talk a little bit more about p-values. So in the last video, we defined p-value. We said that the p-value is the probability of getting a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than the one that we have calculated based on our sample, given that the null hypothesis is true. So remember, the p-value is saying, all right, assume the null hypothesis is true. What's the probability of getting a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than the one that we have gotten based on our sample data? All right, in the previous video, we calculated a p-value based on the hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis, mu is greater than 60. So how did we calculate that p-value? Well, we said we would need to calculate the probability of getting a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than the one that we got, which was 62.75, given that the null hypothesis is true, meaning given that mu is equal to 60. All right, so here's our null hypothesis, mu equals 60. Alternative hypothesis was mu is greater than 60. So if we wanted to draw a little picture of this, we could draw out our sampling distribution of x bar under the null hypothesis. So that would mean that we draw out a normal distribution with mean 60, because that's what the mean is under the null hypothesis. And then we would uh, make sure that it would have variance sigma squared over root n. Sorry, sigma squared over n. Okay, so here's our normal distribution. It's centered at 60. And then we drew in our test statistic, x bar, which was 62.75. So then, in order to figure out which part to shade, we looked at our alternative hypothesis. So our alternative hypothesis is mu is greater than 60. So we're going to shade everything greater than our test statistic because this is the direction of getting more extreme. So getting um, larger and larger x bars means we're getting more and more extreme x bars. So we've shaded our area to the right of our test statistic 62.75. So again, we shade that right area there when our alternative is saying our parameter is greater than some value. Okay, how about if our alternative hypothesis is our parameter is less than some value? So let's think about if we had our null was 60 and then our alternative was mu is less than 60. So again, we draw out the same picture, or a similar picture. We draw out a normal distribution with the mean given by the null hypothesis. And so this is our sampling distribution of x bar under the null hypothesis. So it's still the sampling distribution of x bar under the null hypothesis. Then say that we took a sample and we got x bar equals 58.1. We would draw in 58.1, and then our p-value would be the probability of getting a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than 58.1 under the null hypothesis that mu equals 60. So if we're trying to look at the probability of getting different test statistics, then we know that those probabilities are going to be given by that sampling distribution for x bar. So here's our sampling distribution for our test statistic under the null hypothesis. Here's the particular test statistic that we got based on our sample. And so we look at our alternative hypothesis to figure out which way is more extreme. So if our alternative here is mu is less than 60, then we know that getting smaller and smaller x bars is going to be more and more extreme. So we draw in 58.1, and anything, any x bar less than 58.1 is more extreme than 58.1. So our p-value is that area shaded there. So that is the probability of getting a sample mean that is as extreme as 58.1 or more extreme than 58.1. Okay, so if our alternative is parameter is greater than some value, shade the area to the right. If the alternative is parameter is less than some value, shade the area to the left. How about if we have a, what's called a two-sided alternative, um, meaning in this example here, we'd have mu is not equal to 60. All right, so similarly, draw in our sampling distribution for x bar under the null hypothesis. So we know our sampling distribution for x bar under the null hypothesis is the same old normal distribution centered at 60, and then with the variability, with the variance sigma squared over n. Okay, so we've drawn this here, and say we get a test statistic of 
All right, so we draw in 58.1. So if we looked at the lower tail here, in other words, if we look at the probability of getting a test statistic less than or equal to 58.1, that's only half the story. Because our alternative is mu is not equal to 60. So we have a two-tailed alternative. So this area here is not our p-value yet. It's only half our p-value. So what we could do is calculate that shaded area there. We could calculate that probability and just double it to get our p-value. So when we have a two-tailed alternative, we need to calculate the area of one tail and then double it. Another way to think about this is draw in our same old sampling distribution for the test statistic under the null hypothesis. So again, normal distribution centered at 60 with the correct variance. Here's our sample mean 58.1. All right, if we shade the area to the left, then that's saying here's the probability of getting a test statistic that's less than or equal to 58.1. But this could have, this 58.1, our sample mean could have just as easily been extreme in the other direction. So since 58.1 is 1.9 away from the mean, let's go 1.9 above the mean as well. So we draw in 61.9. So now we have 58.1, 61.9. These two are equidistant from 60. And so we can shade in that upper area there. So our p-value in this case that we have, the alternative mu is not equal to 60. Our p-value is going to be the sum of these two shaded areas. So it's going to be the probability of getting a sample mean less than or equal to 58.1 plus the probability of getting a sample mean greater than or equal to 61.9. All right, so again, we can have three different types of um, three different alternative hypotheses. We could have parameter is greater than some value, we could have parameter less than some value, or parameter is just not equal to some value. And so we have to pay attention to what our alternative hypothesis is because that defines how we calculate our p-value.